I don't know if that's a cop behind me. I hope it's not. When you install semi, uh, semi, ugh, semi, I can't even say it. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel. Happy hump day. I always seem to be making videos on Wednesdays. I don't know why. It, it just works out that way. It's totally not planned. It just happens to be that way. <clears throat> so uh, if you're a new subscriber to my channel, welcome. Uh, today we're going to do something that I've done before, made other videos of, but uh, <clears throat> I wanted to do a little bit more complete because people have asked me different questions and so I want to go through it step by step and do this this video that we're gonna about to do and show you what I'm doing where I'm placing things and what tools you need etc so what am I talking about so we have the car awkwardly parked in the garage I never parked this way I'm doing it this way because then I have plenty of space to do what I need to do uh, we're gonna be working primarily on the rear of the car not the front <clears throat> and the part I'm gonna change it takes almost no time at all it's very easy to change so what am I talking about? I'm talking about these motor mounts. We are going to swap these motor mounts. Every time I look at these motor mounts, their color, their shape, their design, they remind me of something from the 80s. A movie I saw back then. You guys know what I'm talking about? That's right, Robocop. This is almost exactly the same color as Robocop's armored body your uniform whatever you want to call it so we're gonna swap these real quick um, super easy to do the only tools you really need you need a t55 if you have a dot two you need a t55 if you have a first gen 997 uh, it is a nut uh, guys can tell you in the comments if it's an 18 millimeter or seven I don't know what size it is but if you have a dot two a t55 is what you need you need a torque wrench I'm using two torque wrenches so I don't have to switch back and forth you need a for the top 13 millimeter socket that's what the smaller torque wrench is for the bigger torque wrench is for the bottom and you need either a screwdriver or a 7 millimeter to take off one clamp on the air box so that's all you need you don't need a lot of tools so let's get to the car let's show you exactly what you got to take off and oh I'm sorry you do need one more thing you need a jack some kind of something you can stick under the engine to support the weight of the engine as you change your motor mounts uh, I've said in the past you you should change your motor mounts one at a time you could technically change them both at the same time you could if you had a wide enough support that could support the whole engine but I, I don't for safety reasons uh, I don't have the car on a lift I don't have a screw jack or transmission mount or something like that to hold the support all the way to the engine so for for safety reasons I'm gonna support the engine with one jack while one mount is attached so not hundred percent of the weight is on the jack it's on the mount as it's on the opposite mount that I'm not working on at the same time and then we'll install them and you know we'll do the other side that way we're distributing the weight as we're working so we're not relying hundred percent on this jack case it fails because uh, that's the last thing you want is your engine to drop down uh, let me grab this jack over here that's kind of crappy but I got for free a long time ago I'm gonna use that thing I'm gonna use a piece of wood and let me get set up at the car and show you how easy this is to install and do and so the first thing we're gonna remove is this clamp right here right behind the throttle box you could remove this lower one but I want to remove this one if you have a straight slot screwdriver you can just put it in there I like to use a 7 mil. it's a lot easier and faster. Could use a drill to go faster, but there's no need to rush. This is an easy, easy, easy removal. Loosen this clamp up. And once, it's, once it gets loose to that, to a point where I can just turn it by hand, I just take the ratchet off and just spin this by hand. The reason I'm going more than I need to is um, getting it set up when I go to install it. When I go to install it, it's gonna be a little more challenging to get on. So if I loosen it up more now, it'll be easier. You'll see at the install point, it'll be super easy. The next thing we need to take off is your sensor here. This is your mass airflow sensor. The, the button is on the bottom side of it. So if you push up, you can feel it click sometimes. 
prepare the click and then don't pull by the wires pull by the base of it and it'll wiggle out you'll know if it's unlocked because you'll be able to see the orange in that hole if you see orange it's not locked into place and then it just clips into the back of the air box so you just pull this off and then you just take this put it out of the way so the next thing we need to do is there's a there's a plug right here it's spring loaded you can the spring is on the bottom side so you can lift up from the bottom and I'm gonna do the plug if you need to you can just move this out altogether let's see if I can just do this can't remove there I'll just pop it out so you guys can see what I'm talking about okay and then you see the metal spring all right we'll pull it out and that's it and you pull that off that's out of the way once you have the plug off I pull this vacuum line off right here just gently but work it back and forth and pull it off There it goes. And then this comes off with your airbox. So you don't really need to disconnect it from here. You can leave this in here. You can leave it in there like that. I just disconnected it so you could see the electrical connection on it. Uh, but you can leave it on there and just disconnect this one vacuum line. Be careful not to break it. This is uh, plastic and this is rubber and they become brittle over time. So the airbox is ready to come out. So. Now we just pull this clamp, pull this hose back off your throttle, throttle body. This is why I'm wearing gloves because this is so dusty in here. And now it's ready to come out and just pull it up and then rotate it around like so. And see your vacuum line. This is why you leave it, leave it attached to your air box. And the whole air box comes in, it's out of the way. That takes a few seconds. And the next thing we're going to do, we're going to take off these mounts. There's one there, one there. Let's go get the jack and support the engine. All right, so before, actually, before we get the jack and put it on the engine to support it, I want to measure the exhaust tips and the gap to the exhaust tips. Uh, I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. These exhaust tips are adjustable, but we're not going to adjust them. I'm going to measure them before and I'm going to measure after so you can see the difference of sag between the motor mounts versus the semi-solid mounts and the difference is pretty noticeable. Uh, these motor mounts themselves, I don't think they're worn out yet. I think they're worn. Um, I looked up when I purchased them and I actually bought these three, about three and a half years ago. I actually bought them in uh, November of 2021. So we're in January, 2024. So it's not, has not been quite four years. Uh, no, I'm sorry, November, 2020. Uh, is when I bought these. I re the, the motor mounts, I think, was one of the first things I replaced on this car after I first bought it. So we're going to change, we're going to swap those out now. And if I suspect that it is, the, if I confirm that the motor mounts are bad, we'll just get new motor mounts. Um, because I actually like how much uh, quieter the startup and the idle is with the OEM motor mounts versus the semi-solid. The semi-solid motor mounts give you tremendous, tremendous more uh, handling and feel and the car drives so much better handles so much better but as somebody put in a form it puts just that little bit of fizz in your soda that's exactly what it does um, so I actually like the way the the OEM motor mounts feel even though there's a little slop in the engine and transmission I can live with that little bit of slop just for that little bit of creature comfort uh, so we're just going to I'm sorry, got off track here. So let's get back to this. I'm gonna measure real quick the, we're gonna measure real quick the exhaust tips. So exhaust tip to that edge is about an inch. I really need to get a, me, a millimeter, a metric measuring, uh, measuring things. So it's about one inch there. This one's gonna be a little bit, well, it's almost the same. So let's go to the driver's side and, well, oh, I slipped about the same thing. It's about an inch. An inch to that. So remember that for the end. In the end, we're going to measure it again. I promise you, we're not going to just, well, you guys, you'll see, you'll see when we do this. We're not going to adjust the angle of those tips whatsoever. We just want to measure it. 
Now, after we measure it, if we need to adjust them so they're not rubbing on the body, sure, we'll do that. But the point is to just swap the motor mounts and show you how what's the height difference on those exhaust tips because it, prove, it will show you how much tighter the engine is fitting in the chassis and that me and with no slop. With the semi-solids, the engine cannot move independent of the chassis, it will move with the chassis. With the OEM mounts, the isolation rubber that's in there, the engine can, engine can move independent of the chassis a little bit. And that's why you get a little bit of the weight gets thrown around when you go around corners. So uh, next step, it's jack and support the engine. Let me show you exactly where we do that. I know my jack sucks, uh, so, as someone has told me, but guess what? It's free and it works. So I'm gonna continue to use it. Unless you wanna send me a jack, then I would be more than happy to do a review on it and use it. Uh, I will buy a new jack in the future. Right now, not a, not a high priority. So get a block of wood, typically get a bigger block of wood than this. This is all I had because apparently my other blocks of wood have been thrown away, unbeknownst to me. So get yourself a block of wood, roll your jack under here. All right, so you're gonna put your block of wood right here towards the back of it, not all the way, not on the edge. And this is actually why you want a bigger block of wood. I have it just inside of the edge, so it's not all the way on the edge, it's definitely not in the middle. I don't want to put it in the middle because I don't want to bow the that pan, even though it's a dry sump system, it doesn't really have an oil pan, you don't want to bend it in the middle. So I'll place it right here, and you see I'll start jacking the car, and you see the whole car will lift up, see this? So now that I have the engine weight supported, uh, we have to take off our T55 nut, which is at the bottom. You see it right there. That's me zoomed in. It's just barely hanging down below that piece of engine, uh, I believe what's that, this engine subframe uh, that holds the engine to the chassis. And so that's where your T55 will go. And it's kind of tricky getting the extension in there, but I've figured out how to do it and it's actually pretty easy. It's not that hard. It's actually easier on the passenger side. So this is how you're going to get to it. You're going to put that T55 on a long extension and you're going to pass your extension and T55 behind the exhaust pipe that's coming off your catalytic converter and your uh, the back or I guess the however you want to look at the back side of your engine where it has uh, accessory stuff on it. Uh, I forget what what's right there. Right next to my hand to the right is the water pump. I forget what it unit is right there but that's where you want to pass it up and you can see me just trying to get it in there you kind of do it by feel if you get the car a little higher you can actually just stick your just lay on the ground and look up and you can see it all right so this is the probably the best angle I could show you of getting that loose if you've got the weight properly supported and <clears throat> with the jack once you've broken it loose you should be able to turn this very easily if you're ratcheting it and it's tight, then you probably still have a lot of weight on this nut. But you see how easily I'm turning this? This is super easy to turn after you've broken the torque loose and got a couple turns on it because the weight is being supported by the floor jack and the other mount. It's not being supported by this mount anymore. And you, just, you get to a point where you can just take this off and spin it by hand. Uh, I'm not there yet. We're close though because it doesn't take much effort. So I'm going to put the other ratchet on there, just a the regular ratchet, uh, and just give it off, get it a couple more turns, and then I'll do it by hand. And a few more turns by hand, and bam, it's out. I have dropped it before and looked all over for it, and I couldn't find it. And if you that happens to you, look on that bend, that 90 degree elbow right there. It was sitting right on top of that. So... That's one place you can look for it if you know you got it off, but you don't know where it went. Uh, also, when you do this the first time, the engine's going to move down a little bit. Don't freak out. As long as you have the jack there, it's not going to drop out and hit the ground. Uh, but it will move down and drop down just a little bit as you take that off. All right, so now this is the ones on top. These are 13 millimeters. So just break them loose. I'm using a deep socket here because that uh, coolant reservoir is in the way, so I really can't use much else. I've tried using swivels and other stuff in the past, and uh, it works. 
but uh, just a deep socket and a uh, breaker bar, ratchet wrench, whatever, and you can break it loose. With the air box out of the way, it's easy to get this thing out. Uh, and then so I'll just break them loose first with the, I'm using a torque wrench as a breaker bar. I know you're not supposed to, but that's what I do. Uh, and then so I'm going to take this off and I'm just going to grab a regular ratchet wrench and get them till they're hand tight and then I'll just pull it off by hand. This is my regular ratchet wrench. And let me just speed this up and then we'll do it by hand. And voila, one motor mount. So, see, it's not that hard to take off. <clears throat> the thing you need to look at on here when you pull these off, you, you see the rubber, the black part that's sticking out? That's how much uh, stretch has come down so far. It hasn't come down that much. I, when I originally bought this car and I changed them, they were worse. One of the important things you need to look at when you're doing this is that square hole there in the subframe. This subframe is aluminum. Uh, it's not steel, so it is flexible. You can move it back and forth, but when you install your mount, you want to make sure that the square on the bottom of your mount fits perfectly in there. And I'll show you more of that when we do the install here in a second. So this is the one for this side. If you're not sure, these have a certain shape. They only go one way. The important thing is the square here goes to the bottom. So looking at this, look how far away the subframe is from that. So before you even mount anything, you need to jack your car up so the subframe comes up to it. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, and right there, you see where the square is? So let's say this was not centered. Let's say this was off a little bit like so. And I, well, see exactly what would happen is, by it being off, this is not flush. And you see how it dropped in? So if it was not centered in that square, watch what happens when you, when you center it up. See how it drops down? That's what you want. Then you come over here and it's dropped down. And you can install your hardware. Now you have some play in that square. You have some play where you can move this. See how this moves? That play is by design. This, the square in that subframe is bigger than the square on here. And that's on purpose, that's intentional. So that it gives you adjustability of this. So then you just take your hardware that you removed. We're doing everything in reverse order. I put, let me zoom back out, sorry. So I'll install this first. Install your upper ones, get them threaded in, torque them. Why do I say torque them? Because right now there's no pressure from it from the bottom. Right now nothing from the bottom is lifting this because if you, <clears throat> and actually if you wanted to you could lower this again, but get these, make sure this is flush against this frame right here and pull this back off. You want this to be flush against this here and tight and torqued before you put the bottom in the bolt in the bottom because if you do the bottom first and then you didn't have this or you have a little gap in the upper part then you're going to have a gap in the whole thing and if you have a gap in the whole thing you're not going to have a properly torqued uh, engine mount so your engine can float up and down definitely don't want that so right now we're sitting and there's a couple things to check i'm going to just thread this by hand this, it, it's an easy procedure. Once you've done this a few times, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm gonna thread this in my hand. And we're gonna do, to confirm that we're all set up and we're, we've got this all the right way, I'm gonna show you exactly how I do it. So that's, I'm just doing this right now, this is all by hand. Okay, let me grab my wrench here. Where'd it go? So I'm gonna grab my socket here and uh, I'm gonna just tighten these down. 
these is actually these are actually a lot easier to install because they don't have the OEM mounts like that have all of this over over the mounting hole so you got to go over that these RSS mounts are almost flush with the mounting hole so it's a lot easier a lot more space to do things I'm not torquing these yet I'm just tightening them down and I'll show you in a second what we're doing all right that one's tight that one's tight. And, this, and this is just snug no force just snug okay we'll do the torque later those are snug so why did I do that why am I doing all these steps because the most important part is that bottom let me zoom in this is the most important part you see the bottom how that square is not in there so what I want to do on purpose is I'm gonna lower it just a little bit on purpose I'll lower that subframe just a little bit so I didn't mean to shake the camera but I, I moved my hand because the engine was right next to my hand I didn't want to smash my hand all right why did I lower that because I want to double check there's no play in this it is snug and it's flush against that frame mount against that chassis mount so it's nice and so now now would be a good time to torque it uh, the torque spec on this is 18 foot-pounds I have not moved the frame yet I know I've zoomed in and out that's by design let's torque this to 18 foot-pounds shouldn't take much it's a little bit more than snug A little more than I thought. That one's good. All right, get off there. Do the other one. This is, challenge of this is the location. Let me go get an extension so I can do this a little bit easier for this one. It's 18 on that one. Double check the inside one with the other one. I can't use the extension because the reservoir is in the way. So we'll do without an extension. Bam. So they're both at 18. That's what we want. Now, this is the most important part. We're going to zoom back in here. Can. Okay, watch that watch that subframe on the bottom this is the most important part see how it's going up and it's not quite going in right subframe has play in it so you can pull it if you can see see if I can show you I'm zoom out and I'll show you. So if I pull on the subframe, it will move. See that, how it dropped in? And we'll look. We'll zoom back in over here. And see now it's dropped in. This is, this subframe here, this is just aluminum. This is aluminum and it, it can flex back and forth. But you see, I did this by hand. Or now that it's seated fully, let's let's jack it up and get some tension on there. See that? See how that disappeared? That's what we want. All right, now I'm gonna give it like two more pumps. Engine weight is 100% on there. So these are torqued, so they're not gonna move. This upper part's not gonna move, and the subframe, all the weight is right there, which will give me, allow me to reinstall this guy here and torque it properly. And there will be no gap. There'll be no up and down movement between that and this. And that's what we want. So let me reinstall this and then we'll continue. See the thread sticking through? Right there. It'll focus. So that's what we got a thread onto. 
It's this angle does not look like it's a lot of threads, but it's plenty. There you go. That's that's a bit of better. That's a better angle. So we've just got a snake this extension up through there. So let's try to get that. Here's a little. Here's a tip. The nut, the T55 nut, is too big to fit between the gap of the your exhaust and your engine. So put your extension up first. Put your T55 on the other side of this exhaust tube, and then you can get it up there. Always thread this on by hand. Don't thread this on with the wrench, because if you cross thread it, it sucks. I mean, well, if it gets if you cross thread it, you can always take it off and replace your mount, but you don't want to cross thread. Cross thread is not nature's log tight, despite popular opinion. Here's another pro tip: take your regular wrench and just spin it around 360 till you get to that point where you need to torque. It's tight right there? Cool. Now torque it. That way you're not sitting there swinging a big torque wrench till you have to get to this point. Almost there. Torqued, all right. So that's how you do that side. The passenger side is exactly the same. There's no difference. So I'm gonna do the passenger side real quick and then I'm going to reinstall the air box. Um, I guess you don't need to see me reinstall the air box. There's one little tip for the air box. When you go to install, you go to install this. You see, I loosened this up a lot and I pushed it back because this is gonna fight you. I always get it on the bottom lip first so that I get it around here first because it's so tight right here with the air box in the way you can't see it. So if you get the end right here. So if you get the bottom lip first, it's easy to get the rest on and then you can slide your clamp because you've opened, expanded that clamp so much you can slide it on there and lock it down seven millimeter and you're done. thing about installing these type of motor mounts in your car is when you lower it the engine no longer lowers independent the whole chassis and engine lower together so let's take our measurement here let's pull it out we said we said before it was one inch right let's see what it is now from the tailpipes have not adjusted tailpipes kicking things around sorry but we haven't adjusted anything so before it was an, an inch and now we're a little less than an inch 
So you see that it pulled that engine probably, I don't know, what, whatever that is in millimeters, a uh, quarter of an inch up. Quarter of an inch, I believe that's, let me look it up, I'm not gonna lie. I'll put it right here in the video what it is. So that is definitely, that's gone up just a little bit. So it's moved the engine up tighter into the chassis, uh, which is not a bad thing. It does not mean that my motor mounts were worn. It just means that the motor mounts, the OEM motor mounts are on there, have wear. And of course they have wear. They've been on the car for three years. Motor mounts, engine mounts, however you want to call them, on Porsche 911s are notorious for sagging and going bad even after 20,000 miles. I have put, since I installed them, I bought this car with 32,000 miles and I have about 72,000 miles on it now. So it makes total sense that the motor mounts have got 30-ish thousand miles on it. So here they are side by side and they look identical. So if they're wearing, they're wearing evenly. Now I'll tell you, when you buy these new, you see almost no black. The black is flushed down in here. As they get older, this will stretch. The OEM ones that I pulled off when I bought the car were really stretched. So this makes a big difference. The good thing is they're not touching. I can still put my fingers around them, so I'm not, I don't need to adjust anything. Same on this side. They actually, they feel the same. So just got to reinstall the airbox and be done. I'm not going to do install the airbox on this video. You guys know should know how to install an airbox. If you can see, I fixed this grommet. This grommet's missing, pretty normal. This clip here I've broken. All of these things are replaceable. They're cheap. You can buy, it on, you can buy them on FCP Euro or ECS Tuning or any of those sites that have this stuff. I personally love using FCP Euro. They're my go-to for everything. They are not sponsoring me. I wish they would sponsor me, but they are not sponsoring me. Actually, FCP Euro, if you guys are watching this, why don't you sponsor me with a jack? Because my floor jack <laughs> really is trash. It's, it's, it's low-key dangerous, <laughs> but I continue to use it. Um, so if FCP Euro wants to send me something uh, for all the shout outs, how about you send me a floor jack that I could pro pro properly use on this car? Uh, so I'm going to install the airbox and then I'm going to go on a test drive and see did the handling improve. So earlier in the video I said I gave you the torque specs and I said I didn't know what a Gen 1 torque was for the bottom bolt. Well, I've got instructions. That's where I got the torque specs. Uh, so you see that you reuse OEM hardware, 18 foot pounds, 25 newton meters. Uh, for the lower one you use 83 millimeter or 60 foot pounds and... It tells you right there, it's a 12 millimeter nut. I was wrong, I was way off, I said 18. 12 millimeter nut if you have a Gen 1. If you have a Gen 2 997, it is a T55. And here's your torque specs. RS, this came with uh, installation instructions. So <clears throat> it's all back together. Uh, only thing left to do now is go for a drive. They do look really, really, really nice. I will admit, they are very attractive. Don't forget, so I put it on the bottom there. Don't forget your mass airflow sensor connection here, and it just clips into the back of your air box. Uh, don't forget your, uh, I forgot what this valve is, uh, but don't forget both your vacuum line on the back of the side and your electro electrical connection on the front side of it. Uh, and that was the only connections that we removed. And remember, if you see orange here, it's not connected. So let's, we're done with this, let's go for a ride. First impression, turning it on. Uh, now I've done this in the, in the past, I know what to expect. Um, so let's turn it on for the first time. We're actually gonna open the garage door too, so give me one second. Open garage door one. I'm gonna anticipate a little bit of uh, NVH, a little bit of noise, and I think it's going to be a little bit louder because I remember this from the last time I had these in and, and the exhaust is louder. So let's, let's turn it on and hear what we hear. A little bit louder, not bad. Actually, I feel a little tiny bit more vibration, but yeah, a little tiny bit, tiny, tiny bit of vibration. Very subtle though, very subtle. And that's only because it's doing a cold start. Engine's uh, cold, so it's revved up. 
You see? Just a little bit, nothing crazy. Give it a little throttle. Yeah, a tiny, tiny bit of MVH, but actually super subtle. I don't remember it being that subtle. I, I don't know, in my head, I, I thought it was going to be worse. It actually feels good. All right. No clink. Normally, I put it in gear, and it goes clink. No noise. It just went in gear. Make sure I don't hit the side of the garage. We're actually going to... I'm actually going to pull forward and back it out again, and then pull forward again, just to just to be safe. That's very subtle. I really, my, I don't know, my, uh, I, you know how you remember things differently? I remember it being a lot, a lot more vibration than this. It's, I, there is a vibration, almost like a bass. You can feel the bass through the chassis and through the car, but it's not, it's not uncomfortable. It's, it's kind of nice. I can massage me, put me to sleep in this chair like I got a massager on. That's what it feels like. It feels like you have a massager on in your seat. That's exactly what it feels like. Oh, that feels good. Oh, yeah, wake up. All right, let's go for a drive. So this does drive like, it does feel like I remember a little bit. Um, at idle and startup, there's a little bit more rumble than with the OEM mounts, which is to be expected. Um... But driving right now, like driving normal, actually there's there's nothing. There's no vibration whatsoever, and I'm only going. I'm going very slow because I'm leaving the neighborhood. Uh, but just leaving my neighborhood, I can tell you there is significantly less slop and or well, movement. I should say it's not slop is an ugly word. So there's less movement between the engine and the cha and the chassis uh, and the drivetrain itself. The gears are right now very 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 smooth. Now, there's going to be a part where I'm going to have to uh, put the camera in a different position uh, than what I have it right now because I'm going to need both hands on the wheel. So right now, yeah, the car feels very, very responsive. There is no vibration, no harshness whatsoever at driving speed. The only time I notice any extra little vibes, just at idle. Just, and that's contributed to the exhaust I have. And right now, as I accelerate, the exhaust note sounds different. It does change your exhaust, um, but I think that changes your exhaust because it's picking up some vibrations through the chassis, so your knock sensor is adjusting your timing so you don't have knock. Uh, and that's a common known thing that happens when you install semi-solid semi motor mounts. That's what I was trying to say, semi-solid motor mounts. Okay, so, so far so good. I feel zero, zero, zero movement in the chassis, between the chassis and the engine. Like even the steering feels a lot better, but let me put let's set up this camera in a different angle, and we're gonna get a little and so I can have both hands on the on the wheel comfortably, and I can focus on that and not the camera. So I'm gonna get off here on this freeway exit, and then we'll get right back on the freeway uh, with a different point of view and a different angle on the camera, and I can keep talking while we're recording. It's a new angle I have never used before, so we're trying it out for the first time, and we're gonna. Keep this in manual mode. There is water, standing water here at the end of this ramp, so we're going to take it easy until we get past the standing water here. So this part is fun. This is the, these are the curves right before you enter the tunnel going into downtown Portland. Uh, this is fun, but this is not where the car has gotten a little, uh, what's the word? Well, it's not where the car has gotten a little wiggly on me. Where it's gotten wiggly on, well, we're going to get up there in a second. I can tell you the steering response feels very, well, I mean, it's a Porsche, so the steering response is always direct, but it feels more direct even so now. All right, so this turn coming here, so the interstate's gonna split. Uh, if you're going to Seattle or east, you're gonna stay to the right. If you're gonna go to I-5 south, you're gonna stay to the left. Right after this is a sharp curve, and that's where the car's gotten kind of wiggly on me at higher speeds. So we're gonna, we're gonna step up to speed here in a second. Sign says 40. We're going to go a little faster than that. Oh my goodness, it's such a direct feel with those mounts. 
Okay, uh, confirmed. That confirms it. My wiggly issue was the motor mounts because it didn't wiggle at all in that curve. It cornered like it was on freaking rails. So that is 100% my issue. Um, I do feel like I'd still probably, I could benefit from an alignment just a little bit. Uh, I, I think that's always true. I didn't get an alignment when I got the tire, when I replaced my rear tires and I should have gotten an alignment um, because there was so much difference in the amount of tire that's there. But definitely, I, I definitely feel the difference. Uh, I, I am more than confident to say that the wiggle, the movement I felt before was because the motor was moving around, which is great. Um, now I could continue to run these RSS mounts, which feel good. Just give me a little bit of vibe at idle, um, mostly because of the exhaust I have on here. Or I could just put new motor mounts. They're not that expensive for a set. Oh my gosh, these RSS mounts feel so good in these curves. Wow, the car just feels so freaking planted. <laughs> oh my god, I forgot that feeling. Um, no, I think we're going to keep the RSS mounts for a while. They just feel glued to the ground. Holy crap. On ramps, on ramps are fun. Oh my god, it just feels so planted. <laughs> I guess the best way to explain it is the car feels like a freaking go kart, it's just glued to the ground. Oh my god, I love it! I love it! Love it! All right. Thanks for watching, guys.